What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Third Eye Fry, aka Siraj, coming at you with another book review. Today we are going to be looking at The PK Man by Dr. Jeffrey Mishlove. I am actually super excited and thrilled to be sharing this book with all of you for a couple of reasons. The first of which being it's written by a personal hero of mine, Dr. Jeffrey Mishlove. The second is that as a result of reading this book, or during the course of reading this book, I had probably the craziest synchronistic, ex most crazy synchronistic experience that's ever happened to me happen. And uh, I can't help but feel this book was involved, and we'll definitely get into that later. But first, let's uh, do a little exploring as to who the author of this book is. Now, for those that don't know, Dr. Jeffrey Mishlove runs a show called Thinking Aloud. For those that are interested in the world of occult, metaphysics, fringe science, and everything in between, this book has been a beacon of light in this very, very dark world. Um, Jeffrey, because of how he conducts himself with, with, a, with a strict like scientific rigor, yet open-minded and not judgmental, he's been able to interview all the greats and a lot of my other heroes, such as Robert Anton Wilson, Terrence McKenna, John C. Lilly, Michael Talbot, even Ram Dass, and so many more. And what's cool is he's been doing this since at least the 80s, so the homie's been grinding for like 30 or 40 years. And all his episodes are amazing. You can catch his show on YouTube or you can listen to it on podcasts. Um, it's available on all podcast mediums to my knowledge. So it's a little bit about Jeffrey. I'll be including a link to his show in the description down below. I highly recommend checking it out. So now that we have background of the author, let's uh, figure out who this book is actually about. And it is about a man named Ted Owens. And for those who don't know about Ted Owens, he's arguably the most well-documented psychic PK guy of the modern era, aside from maybe Uri Geller, the famous Israeli psychic. Now, what makes Ted Owens special? Uh, this man claimed that he can control the weather, amongst many things, like shoot lightning bolts at people from the sky at will. He could hex people. He could claim to be able to uh, affect the outcome of sports games and many, many more things. Uh, what's cool about Ted is that and he would leave a lot of documentation. He would write to news reporters. He would write to uh, sports writers. He would write to the police, telling them of what kind of weather manipulation he was about to get into before he actually engaged in it. And um, it's all really fascinating. So he left a giant paper trail. The The downside to it is a lot of these, these demonstrations weren't done in a clinical setting. And so it's hard to really, really uh, pin down the exact um, capabilities of his powers. And plus, like, you know, all his demonstrations were usually on such a grandiose scale. You know, he's claiming that he would be able to cause a hurricane in Florida. And he had sent messages that he's about to do that and the hurricanes would happen and he'd tell them which way the hurricane's going to go and it all follows rules. But, you know, there's so many X factors when it comes to things of that magnitude that it's hard to really lock it down into what exactly was caused by Ted. However, there's a lot of weird synchronicities with him that, you know, are too much to ignore. So we'll get into a lot of that stuff a little later on. We should talk about his method right now. Now, Ted claimed that his powers were given to him by what he called SIs. That stands for space intelligences. I found it pretty interesting that in around page 67, he lists his um, method, so to say, of contacting the SIs. And I found it particularly fascinating that um, his communication with the SI space intelligence is kind of resembles communication with uh, what modern people call the machine elves, the DMT elves. And I'll read a little snippet. Uh, now, this is him in communication with them. If I talked, they heard the sound, but the, mach the machine turned the sound into symbols, then the symbols into high frequency sound, which they could understand. And that is pretty reminiscent of what I hear of the DMT elf experience, because uh, you'll often hear people say when they try communicating with uh, the elves, 
the their words will turn into symbols and the this will have will their words will take a 3d manifestation that the aliens can play with and make their own message with and send it back to you um or the elves could do that so it was very reminiscent of that um it's also pretty interesting that most psychics or those with, I guess, spiritual gifts usually can't claim that their gifts are the result of some external intelligence. Uh, the book uses the example that the spiritualists and mediums of the 19th and early 20th centuries had their spirit guides, the occultists had their elementals, and now Geller and Owens have extraterrestrials. And that goes back even further. Shamans had totem spirits, plant spirits that would all uh, aid them in whatever um, power that they were able to demonstrate. Um, if we go a little further in, it starts uh, going into um, a lot of Ted's demonstrations. And it lists a lot of them, all of it with uh, documentation. But what I did find funny was that... Um, uh, a lot of his demonstrations Ted did, like, had little uh, regard for who it would affect. Like, if this dude is causing a hurricane, he wasn't necessarily thinking of all the lives that he would be ruining because of this hurricane in his attempt to prove that he has psychic powers and impress people and all this stuff or get the attention that he deserves or... Which, I mean, if he could do that, he does deserve that attention. But his methods weren't exactly the safest and often served um, to hinder him. Uh, Jeffrey writes in, in regard to his methods, um, if Owens is a monster, in my view, he is no more of a monster than nature herself. He, after all, did not invent hurricanes or droughts. So Jeffrey seemed to consider Ted more of a force of nature than anything. Um, if we go a little further, uh, we, it gets into less of his uh, weather demonstrations and to something I actually found pretty fascinating, his sports demonstrations. Now, Ted definitely, on his spare time, liked to use his PK ability, uh, psychokinesis, to, um, I guess, affect the outcome of sports games. And what I found really interesting is that the world of sports was a lot more receptive to him than any other group that he tried reaching out to, whether it was news reporters or police. And it's pretty funny because, you know, we all know that sport, the world of sports does have a lot of superstitions in it, but people don't normally think of, like, football fans or soccer fans or baseball fans as particularly heady, you know, people that would believe in psychic phenomena. But according to uh, the book and letters, um... Owens did actually get a lot of attention from coaches and owners of the teams. The thing is, Owens often was what you'd call, like, I guess, a petty person. And if a sports team captain or whatever denied his offer to give them psychic protection, uh, he would actually end up cursing them in it and messing their games up. So essentially, he was running some sort of, like, psychic racketeering operation, like some psychic mafia shit, which is actually hilarious. But, uh, for example, um, in 1971, uh, uh, Owens decided to hex the Baltimore, Baltimore Colts, um, because they refused to give him money for protection. And, uh, at the time, um, the owner of the team was a man named, uh, gent named Carol Rosenblum. And it's funny because Carol didn't want to pay him at all for his protection. So he ends up getting his team cursed. And by the end, Rosenblum did in, in fact start writing to uh, Ted Owens at least two separate letters during the season, specifically asking him to remove the Colts from his list of hex teams, which was pretty, pretty interesting. Um, and so uh, later it gets into... Um, uh, the, the, the process of, um, so later it actually gets into, uh, 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 other, other tests and research done within the realm of PK. Um, and there's a lot of really cool research cited, work cited, included, research cited. One of which that I found particularly interesting was the research done 
by Graham and Anita Watkins. Now, these were a husband and wife research team, and they discovered what they would call the lingering effects of PK. Um, so essentially with this experiment, they had a cage and they had, they chloroformed, <laughs> chloroformed, uh, chloroformed a bunch of mice. And um, they had keep some passed out mice on one side of the cage, others on, on the other. And they'd have the, the supposed psychics focus on healing on the mice on one side of a cage. They did found, find that the mice that they focused their healing on did wake up from the chloroform slumber a lot quicker than the ones that did it. But the most interesting thing about it was the research came to the conclusion that the psychics weren't exactly focusing their energy on specific subjects rather than rather they were focusing and the the PK would manifest in in a field not within a subject meaning after the psychics left the room uh, mice would still on the side that they're focusing on would still wake up earlier and quicker than the other side of the, the other mice for about you know um, 20 minutes after the psychics left the room which implies that they the psychics actually create some sort of PK field in that area rather than the subject the energy just being focused on the subject itself um, and so uh, later um, it gets into what the Ted's techniques in contacting SIs and it shares them and it's a list of mantras and this leads to the crazy ass experience that I had. So what people don't know is um, Ted, uh, one of his favorite ways to demonstrate his power is to cause electrical blackouts and he would do this all the time, you know, knock out power grids, whatnot. So I get to the part where it starts giving out Ted's mantras and it tells you read these a couple of times and all that. Now I've been reading this book for about three weeks and I finally get to this part. I read all the mantras and I read them a couple of times and I close the book, I did enough reading for the day. Within 10 minutes of me closing that book, a transformer explodes right outside my house. Shut out all the power, all the power is out for the block, the, the, all over the town. Um, and I don't know all over town, but it's certainly out at my house and is out at my neighbor's house and a couple of other neighbor's houses. And it was like that for quite some time, um, which started weirding me out because the book was saying that the SIs do this to demonstrate their power. And then it gets even stranger because my phone was acting a little weird during that time. Also, um, it wasn't posting things on the internet that I wanted to, it was taking forever. And then I later on, way later that night, I ended up going to sleep and the lights in my room three or four times would just throughout the night just flickered on, which led to me getting horrible sleep, um, which also kind of brought up this other thing um, that kind of worried me is like, yeah, we all want psychic powers and all that, but Ted claims and in the book claims that those that are uh, prone to having psychic ability are also prone to poltergeist phenomena which implies that they're kind of linked. Now, a lot of people have different ideas as to what poltergeists are. I'm in the camp that they are a result of one's own psychic phenomena, psychic ability, just being released in an uncontrolled manner. And that's what the book seems to imply. So I, as much as I want psychic powers, I don't know if I wanna deal with having poltergeists around me all the time and all that haunted ass shit. Like, might take I, I do want the psychic powers though so we'll see you know what happens with that but just something to note that it's not all you know uh cookies and brownies and unicorns you know there's there is like a dark scary side to it um towards the end it t starts talking about um uh uh how ted's way of demonstrating and his his almost petty um desire to be noticed by people almost petty because it is noble to show the world that we're capable of psychic powers and so much more than what we give credit for but just the way he'd approach it is if he would turn down then if he was turned down he would hex people he'd he'd often often his strongest powers were triggered by rage and rejection you know which was really interesting so they kind of fed on each other, but the thing is he'd feed that petty side and, 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 and do these demonstrations out of anger. 
and t um, uh, Jeffrey writes, his flamboyant negative demonstrations, I believe, serve more to reinforce his own ego than to do good in the world. As such, they tend to reinforce the esoteric teachings of many cultures that the display of psychic powers in a detriment is a detriment to the path of spiritual enlightenment. Which is, which is some real talk. Some real, real shit. Um, towards, you know, we get to the very, very um, end of the book and it starts talking about the implications of uh, PK phenomena and why it's hard for... Um, people to to under get into this and people to take it seriously and and it talks about how essentially um there are you know obviously there's just a category general categorization there's more to it but he, jeffrey claims or they write that the american public can essentially be broken down into three basic groups you have traditionalists they cling to the values of the past generations particularly religious fundamentalism for them, the world can be seen as a struggle between the spiritual forces of good and evil. Then you have the modernists. They reject religious dogmatism and superstition. They espouse, espouse humanistic ethics and values. For them, the world is governed by natural laws and operates on rational principles. And the third group, which I personally identify with, as well as Dr. Mishlov, would be described as the fastest growing segment of the American population. They are the transmodern cultural creatives. I, Jeffrey, personally identify with this group. They are interested in spirituality, but not dogmatic religion. They are committed to their own personal growth. They are in very interested in environmental and social issues. For cultural creatives, the power of the unconscious mind are not demonic in the Christian sense, but rather daimonic, as the term daemon was originally developed by the ancient Greeks, encompassing both the positive and the negative. So, overall, I would say this is a um, a fantastic book. It's a fantastic read. I really like how everything's cited, sourced. It approaches things approaches things through this scientific rigor. Um, Doctor Mishlove is one of the only people to graduate with a doctorate in parapsychology from Berkeley. So he has a very rigid scientific approach to things but a very open mind as you have to have with with studying this fantastic and amazing world so all in all i highly recommend this book i highly recommend people check out the show thinking out loud uh and look into it and dr mishlove if for some reason you end up watching this just know you're a personal hero to mine of mine you've done so much for the community and I hope you continue thinking, continue with thinking aloud, and I hope you write some more books in the future, potentially even maybe a follow-up um, with about Ted Owens or just, you know, PK in general. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. I know my camera cut out at some point. Hopefully that won't be annoying when I cut this all together. Uh, bless up, stay fly, and I'll talk to y'all soon.